Hey everyone, Chen here from School of Trade. Today we're going to be taking a look at a short trade here on the S&P. Very, very slow day today uh, in terms of action. We're really not getting any any really continued movement. Every time they try to break out, they just get sucked right back into a range. And when they try to break out the other end, they just get sucked back into a range. Right now we are seeing a nice fade back down to the lows. There we get our fill. Uh, and normally with this type of range on this type of day, you'd, you'd initially be looking to potentially fade this move, uh, looking for a move all the way back up to the high of day. But this one's being a little bit interesting uh, in the sense that we are breaking down. We're not quite back to the low of day yet, but we're primarily getting hung up in this downward movement. This momentum to the downside really has yet to cease. We got a little bit aggressive right here. They sort of blew through the lows, but after that, you know, normally where the buyers would begin taking over, they haven't. Every time they shot up, sellers immediately dumped it down with huge bear candles. So that's showing us that the sellers have a lot of bias to the downside still looking for further movement down. Now, in terms of the targets, really, I mean, the first target really should be down here at the lows of the range. But given this ultimate bearishness that we're sort of seeing here, you could argue for potential larger targets as well. Uh, the way that this is kind of looking to me is somewhat of uh, kind of a, a nasty little uh, flag pattern, slight ascending wedge in that scenario. So the where, where we're entering right now is a little bit early at 21, uh, if you are watching this as an ascending wedge. But that being said, it does kind of make sense in terms of the range why sellers would be looking for a little bit further short movement. So if we do close outside of this area here, I will be looking for larger objectives. Uh, currently, at the moment, we're just looking back down to the low of day. So I'm going to be looking for three – I'm sorry, not the low of day, the low of the move. The big down move was met with buying support right around that area, so I know that I have to be looking for – possible profit taking in that location as well. So 18 and a quarter is that first target. After that though, I'm going to be looking for an initial larger move off of this breakdown. Uh, so this breakdown that they had here, really it kind of started right here. Uh, so I'll start it right there as well. Uh, for the breakdown, we could easily be looking for an extended move down to around 14. That 14 area is showing us a, a potential measured movement to the downside there. So that's where I'm going to be looking for the final objective at 14 and three quarter for the last two. Now, if you couldn't tell, uh, just given the overall movement that we're seeing right now, it's very, very slow. I'm not expecting this to go in the next candle. It's probably not going to go in the next 10 candles, given the slow movement here. But we'll keep an eye on this area. We are seeing sellers begin to take back over again. Now we just need to see them take over for the final push and slam this through the lows. Get our target at 18 and a quarter to be safe. And after we get that target, then we're going to be looking for that big boy down at 14 and three quarters. So from our entry point here to that first objective, we're looking at a two and three quarter point move. And then after that, the final objective down to the lows for six and a quarter more if we can get it. So we'll be back in hopefully a little bit and we'll see if we can start getting that breakdown that we're looking for. Seeing strong selling pressure coming off. They came back to our entry area at around 21 and then immediately dumped right back down. So sellers are definitely showing their conviction to the downside. We just need to see them kind of finish the job. We're getting hung up at the range lows right now. If we continue to see it struggle in this area, uh, it may look to just take the profit where we can get it on the first target and lock in where we can. Uh, in terms of you know further downward movement, definitely still potential on the table here for that further that bigger move down that we're looking for. Uh, but we're not really getting out of this chop area. Uh, we're still kind of stuck here. So this is the attempt to try to break down. And there we go. We get that target filled. So beautiful move down. We have that first target filled. Now, in terms of what we're seeing, going to going to break even, I think, is just kind of asking for trouble. You're just going to get whipped out. That's just the type of day it is. So instead of going to break even, I'm not going to be looking to go straight to that point. I'm going to look to use a little bit of the profit that I have built in to extend my stop back a point. Uh, so I'm willing to give them four ticks uh, since we've locked in almost three. I'll take a 30, you know, a 30 percent drop drop in profit just to kind of understand the fact that this is choppy, probably going to come back to this area before it breaks down. Uh, if we do get a chance to lock in a little bit tighter, I definitely will. But we do have to be a little bit kind of cognizant of the fact that, well, we're choppy. It's a range. You have to play it a little bit safer and offer up some of those profits to look for those bigger targets. So uh, if you're a scalper, then you're probably already done and you're flat. I'm looking for a bigger target, so I'll let up a little bit of the 
profit to give it some room to fall here. So uh, we'll give it a little bit more time, see if we can get that further breakdown to that next target at 1475. All right, so as anticipated, we see them come back to that break-even point. I can't say that's much of a surprise. And then they break straight back down. So this is the kind of thing that you have to deal with on these range-type days. If you went straight to break-even, they came back and they tapped you out, right? You didn't really have much of a choice there, and you got stuck out at break-even. And then you missed that six-point drop all the way back down to the lows. So kind of picking apart the type of day this is, it makes sense. It's logical to use a little bit of your profit to offset it just a little bit. You don't want to give back so the trade turns into a loss, but you want to try to give it as much room as you possibly can so that you don't get stuck in this type of scenario. It goes up, hits out those break-even guys, and drops all the way back down, and we get our target filled. Gorgeous move down. We played it like a fiddle. I don't think we could have asked for a better move than that. Uh, and overall, just on the trade itself, we had a nice drive down. That's 1037.50 on the trade. Uh, in terms of ticks, 1037.50 translates to 83 ticks to the downside. So uh, beautiful move on an otherwise very, very tough environment in the market. Slow, slow, slow. So be careful uh, on today's movement, especially going into the afternoon. Not expecting a whole lot, but hey, you never know. They might go a little bit crazy. So, uh, But that's going to do it for me. Overall, 83 ticks on the trade. If you have any questions about it, feel free to send an email to School of Trade. Don't forget to check out our trial at schoolofthetrade.com. And as always, we'll catch you next time.